All right. I've been in 2 Timothy, and I can't get out of 2 Timothy. I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> it's so much fun. And I've been trying to say this a couple times, but I keep getting off at all kinds of different stuff. If you don't understand the gospel and grace and the way that Paul has already laid everything out in Romans and in Galatians, this will be an unattainable stack of demands put in your lap and you will only struggle. You have to understand grace and it will unlock all of it and will all make sense. You have to understand when he explains grace or when he says something like be strong in grace, it's a loaded term with a ton of meaning and it is not used lightly. It is not some, oh, be strong in the grace, brother. No, no, no. This is loaded with meaning. And you have to understand it. Every word is perfect. And if you approach the word, it's like when the ark was taken by the Philistines. And Dagon fell on his face. The, the, their false their false god and they're like we got to get this thing out of here so they send it back on some oxen and they put all this they put these gold tumors in and these golden mice and they sent it back and on the way back the ark was on these oh, was on a cart with these oxen and the oxen stumbled and there was this guy named Uzzah and he saw the, the oxen stumble, and he wanted to put his hand out to hold up the ark. You can't approach the word. The word is sacred and holy. And if you come to the word and you approach it with the idea that you are going to hold up this standard, you're going to hold the ark up, it will strike you down. It will strike you down. There's no possible way. If you take all of these as a list of commands, you will be struck down on the spot. <laughs> and this is exactly what I did to myself over and over and over again when I read anything in the Bible. I, anything I read, I, I just get put my hand on the ark and get struck down again. Find out that I can't do anything that this book talks about. It's because it's sacred and holy and there is something, it is written in a way that it discerns the intentions of your heart. You must approach it, you must ap approach the word, the ark. You must approach it with the blood is the only way. There's only one way. You must approach it with the blood. You must approach it with the blood that must be the intention of your heart I can't I can't do this and I can't understand it if I'm seeking something that I should do I'm never gonna understand this and I'm never gonna be able to uphold it Jesus is the only one who can uphold the standard the ark and he is the word so, we approach by His blood, which He already presented. All I have to do is have faith in it. I should remember the blood, my sins. Remember the gospel. Remember the gospel whenever you get into the Word. Remember the gospel. Let the gospel be your discernment. Jesus has paid for my sins. Jesus paid for my sins and there's no spot or blemish that will be found on me. There's no sin. Sin has not been imputed to my account. 
but the righteousness of Jesus Christ has been imputed to my account. Thank you, Jesus. I have only one, I have only one thing I can say is the blood, his blood. Okay, now help me understand, Lord. <laughs> and it just opens up. You start to see it's not due, it's done. It's been done. All of these exhortations and even charges are to keep the gospel pure. To keep it faith alone in what Jesus did. It's not about me. And this is what I did in the last video. Uh, the last time I tried to record this, I got into this. And I, I don't know if, it, if it's totally clear. But I can only rest in Jesus' death which killed me, put an end to my flesh. <sighs> you know what? I, I'm not going to get into it. I, I want, it's just not what I want to say right now. The, f the flesh wants to hold the ark up, wants to approach the ark with human hands as a list of commands. But that is unacceptable. And we, when I say we will be struck down, I mean you'll find out real quick you can't do it. We can't do it. It's an impossible standard. If you take those things that Paul is charging Timothy with or any anywhere else, if you don't take them rightly, Oh, you'll flounder. You'll flounder. I did for a long time. Only the blood. Only the blood is clean. And Jesus is the only one who can hold the ark up. It is sacred and holy. And the blood is the only acceptable thing. And when I read now, freedom. One more thing I'm going to add real quick. God is speaking to us in his son. God speaks a language. John Corson calls it sunnish. But God is not speaking to us in Moses. No. Don't go back to that. That is not how he speaks to us. He speaks to us in his son. So, speak the language. And everything that he will speak to you through the word will be through his son. And through his death and resurrection. It'll make sense. It will make sense. Justification by his obedience unto death and his resurrection which gives me life. And so he speaks to us in his son and in his accomplished work and what he's done. Not through Moses, not through the deadness of the letter, but through his son, who is alive, who is the word. And I'm going to add another thing, but I have to think of it first. And if you approach the word by the way of Moses, and law keeping, you will not understand it. It won't make any sense because God will not speak to you. And you will see what the flesh can do. You'll see the tumors and the mice, and you'll see men struck down in confusion because he will not speak to us through the letter. He speaks in his son. That's it. He used to speak through the prophets and the law. He speaks in his son now.
When Jesus speaks in the New Testament, it is in the context of grace. It is in the context of grace. When Paul speaks in the New Testament, is it in the it's in the context of grace. You will have fun every time you come and read the Bible if you remember that the blood has made you unaccusable because it is Jesus' blood. It's his blood. Who's gonna change who, who's gonna accuse you with his blood? Wait, is he gonna accuse you with his blood? <laughs> yeah, right. You didn't spill it for no reason. It's because it is saving. It, it, it is effectual to save to the uttermost. This blood makes you blameless. And if you remember that and you approach the word, you will never have a bad day in the word. You'll get to enjoy it every time. So don't approach the word like there's work to do or expectations to be met. There's no demand. It's already been met in Jesus and we need to rest in what he's done. We do that by recognizing the blood. Yeah. So approach, draw near with your confidence in the blood. Look at the word and just enjoy. It is a refreshing drink. Approach with the blood. Don't try to put human hands on the ark. Don't try and speak to God in Moses. Speak to him in Jesus. Come near with the blood. There's tons of refreshment waiting.